Located at the foot of Mount Parnassus, there was a sacred place for all Hellenic people. This place was known as the Oracle of Delphi. Its origin dates to the clash between Apollo and the serpent Python, which was sent by the goddess Hera to pursue Leto, who was a lover of Zeus and mother of Apollo and Artemis. After defeating the terrible viper, Apollo decreed that on that spot, a temple would be built in his honor, and indeed the edification was established. Apollo was also considered the god of prophecy, and due to his mythological origin, the sacred oracle of Delphi surpassed all others in terms of prestige and devotion. The oracle really existed and was the main religious center for the ancient Greeks. Generals, kings, and noblemen consulted the oracle before making any important decision, whenever it was feasible to do so. No war, alliance, or colonizing expeditions happened without listening to what the oracle had to say beforehand. There was a subterranean chamber inside the Apollo's temple, in which only the Pythonesses, who were the temple's priestesses, could enter. According to the tradition, there they inhaled the gases emanating from the buried body of the Python serpent. These gases and Apollo's gift gave the Pythonesses the power of prophecy. Before asking the oracle anything, the visitor went through a process of purification. They had a sacred fountain to clean themselves, which contained the following inscription. For the good pilgrim, a drop is enough. For the bad, not even an ocean could remove his stains. Then it was necessary to offer a sacrifice to the gods. A lamb or a bird would have been killed, and then a priest searched their bowels, trying to find divine signs. The question posed to the oracle was written on a clay board and delivered to the Pythoness. Inebriated by the gases, the priestess went into a trance and began to mumble cryptic words. These words were written by the priests. The answers delivered were usually enigmatic, mysterious, and often difficult to interpret. Nevertheless, the peoples of that time stated that the prophecies had a high degree of accuracy, and, when they were not confirmed in reality, they believed a misinterpretation had been the cause. The oracle's span of glory lasted many centuries, until its decline arrived. Nero, the Roman emperor, ordered his legions to loot the sacred temple. During the looting, more than 500 statues of bronze and marble were stolen, and then taken to Rome. And with the growth of Christianity, the oracle was permanently closed by the Emperor Theodosius in 385, considering it was a site where superstitions and pagan rituals germinated. But the temple was already in decline even before that. Julian, known as the last pagan emperor, sent an emissary to pose the oracle a question. The priests of the temple sent him the following reply. Tell the emperor that the glorious temple fell into ruins. Apollo does not have a roof over his head anymore. The leaves of the laurels are silent. The sources and prophetic streams are dead. At the beginning of the 20th century, scholars did not find any signs pointing out to the presence of the famous prophetic gases, concluding that everything was simply a superstition. However, in the final periods of the 20th century, Geological studies indicated that the temple is located on top of a geological fault from which gases are emanated, perhaps with anesthetic and psychotropic effects. The glorious past of the Oracle of Delphi is recorded in works such as Oedipus Rex, in which the Oracle prophesies that Oedipus is destined to kill his father and marry his mother. Due to its pivotal importance in the Greek world, the Oracle was considered the navel of the world and in its walls, the famous inscription and the biggest of all advice could be found. Know yourself.